Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, and today I'm hanging out with Nerd Steve, Brian Feaster, Ryan, and Brian, uh, Brian Feaster is the designer of Open Legends RPG, and we're gonna get into some some characters. Before we do that, drop down the description for where you can find Nerdarchy, the newsletter, learn how to game with us, as well as get. Our PGJ tips delivered right to your inbox. All right, so uh, you know we're getting ready to sit down and, and check out his game for the first time. Uh, Brian has been uh, there. We were lucky enough to play with some of uh, Brian's pre-generated characters, and since we're new to the system, we're going to kind of talk about, or he's going to kind of tell us how to actually, you know, use the characters that he's got here. The high-level overview, as it were, of the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, Dave, you've uh, you've chosen to play a paladin. Yes, Uther uh, the paladin. Nice. And uh, <clears throat> Ryan's going with the... Uh, Ruby, the arcane protector, a bit of an or abjurer uh, sort of wizard. And I'm going with a monk. Uh, now, Brian, you told us off camera that these archetypes is more like just a name you, you pick out. Yep. This game doesn't have classes. Yeah, that's So you just great. assign your, your abilities and your points similar to the way mutants and masterminds mm -hmm. allows you to just pick your points and what you can actually do, and then it's up to you to just identify what you are. Yeah, that's exactly right. So archetype, when it, when people download their own character sheet and see that there, that's just whatever you want to call yourself. So, you know what I mean? so. If, if, like, okay, my character's a monk. So if I didn't put any points in creation to kind of do like a meditative healing, yeah. I could focus those points elsewhere, and I could just be like a street brawler. Yeah, you could be straight up street brawler. You could be the, the sort of like monk that transcends, like we, you and I talked about, where you could have the movement attribute, so you can teleport mm. and stuff like that. You know, so I mean, it, it really is just how how you want to interpret how yeah. you're spending your points. That's what you are. Exactly. I think that's kind of cool. Okay, so it's total point by uh, you know yeah. archetype system, so it's classless. Um, there is levels. We have uh, attributes which are physical, uh, social, and supernatural. Uh, and mental. And mental. Yep. Oh, mental. I missed the mental. All right. Um, no worries. Yeah, I see right there. So mental. under physical, you've got agility, fortitude, and might. Under social, you got deception, presence, persuasion. Under mental, you have learning, logic, perception, and will. And supernatural, you have abjuration, alteration, creation, divination, enchantment, energy, entropy, illusion, and movement. Yep. Roger that. So, um, is there is a pot? Will, will there be char like? Would there be characters that would basically have no supernatural abilities whatsoever? Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, I mean, you would just choose like, say, you're a fight. If you're if you're a soldier or a warrior type, you that that would we be call them normies. Pointless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we call them what? Normies. Normies. <laughs> normies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely, you can definitely um, uh, play this game that way. Um, I've played. Uh, there's a character in the. That's Damien the Assassin or something in the pregens for people who check out the pregens. Who's just straight damage dealing, no no supernatural attributes he, of he any was, kind. He was one of the one of the ones I was I was considering. <laughs> and, well, the link to uh, open uh, Open Legend RPG will be in the description, so you can check it out. You can download it for free, um, and you can then you can take take a look at all the uh, the pregens. Yeah, and so so that people can find what we're about to discuss, go to Open Legend RPG, then go to uh, Chapter One Character Creation. Scroll down a bit, and it'll say there's a link there to the pregens in in Google Drive. <clears throat> so so we now we talked about this in the other video. You have a Kickstarter that's coming up in the near future. Yep. Um, so let's let's get into uh, characters. Who, yeah. who who do you want to delve into first? I don't know. Let's go. go let's, let's go in order then. Why don't you Why don't you work on Dave's character? Dave. Okay. So Dave's character. Um, so some of the interesting things that Dave's character has is he has a high fortitude, which you need in order to wear very heavy armor. He has the very heavy armor to go with it, as one would expect of a paladin. Uh, so he has absurdly high defense scores. Um, <laughs> and in Open Legend, you can be a mage that has absurdly high defense scores if you want to. If you take a high fort score so that you have the endurance to wear that plate mail, then by all means, uh, I think that's fun. I don't see any reason why games shouldn't allow you to do that. It seems like lots of games have invested a ton in preventing people from, from doing from that. playing characters they want to play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so you have uh, you have a might score that is uh, actually let's see. Um, oh, okay, this is interesting. Huh. Okay, so this is this is slightly off on your sheet, but it doesn't really matter. You actually have a might score of five, and you have a very interesting attribute, uh, interesting feat. So you have attribute substitution. So. Um, 
uh, an example I like to use that's really f funny or weird is uh, if people saw the Sherlock Holmes movies with Robert Downey Jr., mm -hmm. where he's able to basically kick ass because he's able to time and, and sort of because assemble. Because he's so this. damn smart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. So attribute substitution creates a permanent link between two attributes that you choose. One, And so essentially with that, um, you could have logic as you tied to might. So essentially your ability to dish out damage in a fight is determined by your logic. Right. right? So that's an example. Your character It's linked to creation. Creation. Because you're like you have a holy aura and you you channel some sort of divine energy and so because of that your creation is the is the power source for your might score. So you, you know, kick ass in the name of uh, creation or positive energy or whatever. <laughs> and, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. And I also have armor mastery for the scale mail that I wear. Yeah, exactly. And so that actually makes your armor, you get more of a bonus from your armor, and it also reduces any like penalty to move, to speed or whatever. And um, so, so what are feats in your game? What, what do they, what, uh, define the feat? Yeah, so feats in my game, um, they, they're everything. So uh, attributes give you access to banes and boons, which we'll talk about at some point, not necessarily now. Um, but the feats, they they make you more likely to be able to invoke a bane. They make you, in your case, uh, you, you're, you're saving points from your attributes because you're linking two. So you only have to invest in one and you get the benefit twice. So um, I've only heard a little bit and looked at a little bit so far, but is it fair to say feats basically change how the rest of the rules interact with themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a good way to put it. Okay. For, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, a common... I While we're talking about feats for people who are just getting started and maybe, you know, overwhelmed or don't know where to start, the easiest feat you can take... And I need to write this blog post. I want to write a blog post called How to Make a Really Dumb Open Legend Character, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is just another way of saying, like, how to make it really easy on yourself if you're if you're just playing the game for the first time. So there's a, a, a feat called Attack... Uh, uh, sorry, uh, attack specialization. And what that does is you choose something like um, like long sword or maul. You can also choose lightning energy or you know any number of different things that are attacking attributes, but more narrow than the general attributes. So you get like, specialize, right? Mm -hmm. And you tell you get to t choose your story. Like, are you a lightning mage? Or are you a fire mage? You, know, you choose it. Um, and what it does is it gives you advantage permanently on those roles. So we talked a little bit before about advantage, about how you know uh, you're 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 wanting to roll more of your attribute dice because there's a chance they'll explode. So you know you can just take attack specialization over and over again as a really simple way to make a character, and then you'll just be rolling lots of dice and you'll be dealing more damage than other characters. But um, you'll you know, be you're, focused on that one aspect. Yeah, and your but your character is a tank. Right, so your character as a tank, you know, you have armor, you know, you have a high armor, really high armor class, and focus on using armor. Um, and then the creation thing is just a, it's almost a flavor thing. You could just have a five in might and a five in creation, but it's hard to do that because it's expensive, right? Right, because of the point you know, cost. So, 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 so talking about the supernatural abilities, I have two of them. Yeah, uh, I have divination and I have creation. Yep. Creation, uh, from what you've said previously, I'm led to believe that that's like basically healing magic. Yeah, it's healing magic. It's also positive energy. Um, it even it even ties to uh, the the fear bane. So the idea that you can like invoke some sort of like holy wrath that would scare people or something like that. That's another uh, bane that's tied to the creation attribute and regeneration and and like you said, healing. So yeah, absolutely. And then divination, mm -hmm. I think that one's kind of self-explanatory. Ex uh, external information. Yeah, yeah. And you have you like have a to. and you have like a low divination score, yes. which is which is what you want to be able to just detect things. So that's the paladin's ability to scan for magical or evil or good auras and stuff like that. Um, so that's a very low ranking divination one. If you were to invest heavily in divination, you would be like a contemplative paladin because ultimately divination gives you uh, reading of other people's thoughts, the ability to predict the future, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, so but you you just have a one. So you just you, all you can do actually is is detect. You know. Okay. So. <clears throat> Yeah. Right, so do we want to jump over to the... Yeah. Uh, sure, sure. So I'm Ruby the Arcane Protector. So this is some iteration of an ab abjuration specialist. Yep. All right. So I guess my main thing is uh, is being uh, an abjurer under Supernatural. I have a five. Yep. And I have a movement of three. So I'm also pretty good at sort of teleporting, popping in and out, right? Yep. 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 Okay. So... 
I can use a longbow, but then I also have the boon focus on um, teleporting and uh, defensive experts. So if we want to, I cool. guess, describe those assets. Or yeah. So defensive. Uh, so. Um, Boon focus. Uh, so in Open Legend, we have this thing called every roll matters. So what that means is um, when you roll less than the target for something, the GM can either, at their option, make you fail. But what we don't want to happen, one of the things that I'm trying to switch the paradigm on is sort of like, you know, when five people all roll to break down the door and then the wizard breaks it down because he's the only one that got lucky and rolled Because he rolled a 20, 19 or 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're not doing that. So instead... Um, what we're doing is everything, every roll matters. So if you roll, it should have meaning. Um, boon focus is the special ability to bypass that, where normally to invoke a boon, so we said before, it's not Vancian, so you don't have a limit to how many times a day you can do stuff in this game. Um, and so <coughs> you can uh, teleport, because you have boon focus teleport. So you could have the movement attribute in order to teleport and you could roll every time you attempt to do it and you might fail or succeed but by taking that feat you make it so that you'll always succeed there's no roll anymore you just automatically teleport at right. will this one feature that's the <clears throat> rules exception to to that because otherwise like maybe you teleport and you land on your ass because you yeah, just you did it wrong exactly right yeah. right right so whatever is interesting you know flavorful and adds to the story that's my thought and then the other one is he doesn't deep. walk anywhere all he does is teleport i uh, just <laughs> pop places yeah i have a character so, so funny story. Um, this is actually a really interesting one because you can take a you can take it a second time for the same thing, and what it does is it decreases the invocation time. So right now, teleporting is a move action. So like you can use it to replace your movement, right? Makes sense. So if you take it a second time, it bumps the invocation time down to a minor action. Which minor actions work like this. There, you can't do the same one twice, so you can't like stack them like in Pathfinder, where you kind of like are stacking all these things on top of each other. You can't trade it out for another thing, right? Right. Yeah. But you can do like if you want to do a perception check and a, tel uh, a something else, then you can do both as long as it's not the same minor action. So because it becomes a minor action, you can actually teleport once as a minor action and once as a move action, so you can double move, and it's an expensive thing to invest in but I have a character in my main game who that's his whole thing he's like a tank that teleports like crazy so mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's an interesting like you know so, so there's that and, and like Nightcrawler but kicks ass when he arrives yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and then defensive expert the other one um, that is uh, that ties into a a mechanic that a lot of people maybe won't use in Open Legend, but it's fun when it's, when people do, which is the ability to interrupt another attack. So if one of your allies gets attacked, and I roll like a 50, which is going to just like one shot kill them, you could step in and intervene, and with the, light, the right luck and ex rolls of explosions and stuff like that, um, your roll with your abjuration attribute, uh, their defense becomes your roll. So it's a counter roll. So it's a counter. It's a counter spell. Yeah. yeah so, it, but it, but, you know, just like everything's classless, it works for paladins. You know, you can use your, you can use your might score. You could do it too. You know what I mean? Like you can shield him and like, you know, tackle him out of the way of the fireball that's coming in or something like that. Right. And so in doing so, you're trading out the action that you would get in your next number. turn. Yep. So is it just? The action, like there's an action move minor, is that yep. how that works? Yep. So you're just trading that one asset out, okay. yeah. that one piece. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So yeah. what I'm hearing, five is the max. Uh, five no. is the max for what? Oh, yeah. First level. Um, so until you get to sixth level, five is your max. And then it becomes your level. Mm -hmm. So at sixth level, you can have a six attribute score. Seventh level, you can have a seven. And so uh, that's our control valve on the game. Um, I think most games happen, most action in, in campaigns happens between level one and ten. The cool thing is absolutely no problem to go up to 30 or 10 or 30 or 15 or 20 if you want to uh, because it's all there just in the points and stuff like that but but you have to have the points too. yeah yeah so yeah but you'll hit but the way that the numbers work it's a it's 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 a bell curve it's a it's it's a Gaussian effect right where it costs nine to go from an eight to a nine score and it costs two to go from a one to a two score mm -hmm. right so in your points uh, economy and within the game, getting a nine, getting getting many nines is something you wouldn't be able to do until like uh, like twentieth level. I think you could have three nines or something like that. So it, it does hold meaning, you know, throughout. If, okay. You know, so of course, you know, if you invest in that one 
that one power that Dave's got, you could quickly have, or you know, yeah. you could get, you could yeah. build two nines. Yeah, 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 way, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So I've got a monk. Uh, he's got an agility of five, fortitude of two, a perception of three, will of two, and creation four. So he's he's all about, you know, being able to you know take a hit, being agile, yep. being being aware, and the ability to to heal. Yep. Absolutely. Now, with with his things, he has um, multi-target attack specialization melee. Yep. As well as combat momentum and martial focus unarmed. Cool. So, how how does that cool. play in? Yeah, yeah. So you have a really you have some interesting uh, feats that I, I I like a lot of those feats. So I'm glad that you're playing that character. Um, so the uh, martial focus is an interesting one. Uh, martial focus is represents uh, is actually a way of representing something akin to like a vow not to use weapons other than your hands in mm -hmm. your character's case. So what that means is, and that can apply to anything because you could take martial focus. So that's what this uh, disadvantage on non exactly uh, unarmed attacks. Yep, exactly. Yep, yep. So you get disadvantage on non -armed, unarmed attacks, but the awesome bonus that you get for that trade off is um, your functional attribute score goes from five to six. Okay. So you actually you don't get any of the benefits like um, Bane's have a, a require a requisite associated with them. So there's some real powerful banes that you need to have an attribute score of six. Okay. That does not qualify you for those attributes, but it just affects the dice alone. Okay. So you have you're rolling everybody else's ceiling is two D six for their attributes, mm -hmm. but you have two D eight for your for your Okay, attack so so for, for attacks that would that's where that would be. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so that's got, I've got you know two d six written down or twenty twenty yeah. plus two d six yeah, yeah. agility, but then under the tax. Yeah, exactly. It's, if it's unarmed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's that one. And then uh, what were the other feats? Uh, combat momentum. Combat momentum gives you the ability to move as soon as you not as soon as you take somebody out. Okay. All right. So that, like a right. samurai effect where you slice right through somebody and into the next person. Okay. And then or it says like uh, multi-target attack specialization. So I'm guessing that's where this falls in, where I can either hit three targets at at my regular attack, or I can do two attacks and attack with advantage. Yeah. So the idea. So right. So with your character. Um, so we have an interesting thing. Uh, in other games, you like get an extra attack at a certain level. In Open Legend, you can you can do um, you can do multi-target attacks even at first level. So uh, a wizard, if you were play if we pretended that your multi-target thing was a wizard's area effect, you know, just for the for fun, you can do a fireball at first level in Open Legend, right? You can do a two by two square or a three by three square. The cost is simply the number of 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 targets. So um, so there, there are a couple versions of it, so let me explain this a little bit. In melee, you can attack anybody that's adjacent to you, right? right? And so the number of targets is, is the disadvantage that you get on your attribute roll, right? right? So if you have a 2d8 mm -hmm. and you attack three targets normally, then you would roll five, you would roll three extra for the disadvantage three that that gives you. So you would roll 5d8, but you're keeping the two lowest ones. So okay. it's very hurtful to your mm -hmm. potential to explode dice and right. stuff like that. Right. Your character's feet offsets that. So essentially, in your case, there's no penalty to attack two ad adjacent targets, right? So like, uh, you have one level of it, I think, is, or, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so in your case, it just offsets um, by one. So like, if you attack two targets, you'll have disadvantage one. You know, instead of disadvantage two. Well, no, this says if I attack two targets, I attack them with advantage one. If I attack three... Yeah, okay, it, okay, okay. I, I think I might... I apologize. It looks bad on me. But that, that may be uh, from the higher level, actually. Okay. I think I may have miscopied that on that okay. spreadsheet. All right. Um, but So if I attack two people, I don't suffer disadvantage. If I attack three people, I do. Yeah, yeah, okay. basically. All right. Yeah, so, you, yeah. Well... <laughs> I got to set the record. Disadvantage screen. one. Disadvantage one. Yeah. yeah. But there's a there's another thing that we can get into, which is uh, if you do nothing but attack and you do what we call focus action, um, then you get advantage on any action that you would take. So what your character would probably do is do a focus action that gives you advantage one, and then the feed gives you advantage two, and then if attacking two targets offsets that, so you're back to back to zero. One. So yeah, sorry, my fault on the. 
on the character sheet. So is sheets. the focusing, is that a minor action? Focus, uh, it's or a focus action. It means that you actually, you do it instead of taking minor actions. Yeah, so okay, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you can't take a minor action. And if you have like a boon, for example, your character can regenerate because mm. you have creation. Right. You can invoke the regeneration boon and uh, you're not guaranteed to succeed in that, but you can do it at will. Mm. And... Um, if you wanted to take a focus action, you can't concentrate on like a bo a boon that you have, yeah. in, you know, you're sustaining. So that would be the payoff, the the trade off there. Okay, cool, so. excellent. So with that, I think we're going to wrap this video yeah, up so we can actually play the game. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, you know, then you guys can check out the game after we play, and we'll probably do a post mortem as well. Uh, you can put your thoughts in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can check us out over on Instagram, or you can tweet at us at Nerdarchy. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy. characters yeah. yeah yeah absolutely so dave you've uh, you've chosen to play a paladin yes uther uh, the paladin nice and uh, <clears throat> Ryan's going with the... Uh, Ruby, the arcane protector, a bit of an abjurer uh, sort of wizard. And I'm going with a monk. Uh, now, Brian, you told us off camera that these archetypes is more like just a name you, you pick out. Yep. This game doesn't have classes. Yeah, that's So right. you just right. assign your, your abilities and your points similar to the way Mutants and Masterminds mm -hmm. allows you to just pick your points and what you can actually do, and then it's up to you to just identify what you are. Yeah, that's exactly right. So archetype, when it, when people download their own character sheet and see that they're, that's just whatever you want to call yourself. So, you know what I mean? So, yeah. the pregens, who's just straight damage dealing. No no supernatural attributes he, of he any was, kind. He was one of, the, one of the ones I was I was considering. <laughs> and, well, the link to uh, open, uh, open Legend RPG will be in the description, so you can check it out. You can download it for free. Um, and you can then you can take a, take a look at all the uh, the pre gens. Yeah, and so so that people can find what we're about to discuss, go to Open Legend RPG, then go to uh, Chapter One Character Creation. Scroll down a bit, and it'll say there's a link there to the pre gens in in Google Drive. <clears throat> So, so we now we talked about this in the other video. You have a Kickstarter that's coming up in the near future. Yep. Um, so let's let's get into uh, characters. Who, yeah. who who do you want to delve into first? I don't know. Let's go. go let's, let's go, go in order then. Under physical, you've got agility, fortitude, and might. Under social, you got deception, presence, persuasion. Under mental, you have learning, logic, perception, and will. And supernatural, you have abjuration, alteration, creation, divination, enchantment, energy, entropy, illusion, and movement. Yep. Roger that. So, um, is there is a will, will there be char like would there be characters that would basically have no supernatural abilities whatsoever? Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, I mean, you would just choose like say you're a fight if you're if you're a soldier or a warrior type. You that that would we be call them normies. Pointless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we call them what normies? Normies. <laughs> normies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely, you can definitely um, uh, play this game that way. Um, I've played. Uh, there's a character in the that's Damien the assassin or something in the pregens for people who check. Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, and today I'm hanging out with Nerd Dave, Brian Feaster, Ryan, and Brian, uh, Brian Feaster is the designer of Open Legends RPG, and we're gonna get into some some characters. Before we do that, drop down in the description where you can find Nerdarchy the newsletter, learn how to game with us, as well as get. Our PGJ tips delivered right to your inbox. All right, so uh, you know we're getting ready to sit down and, and check out his game for the first time. Uh, Brian has been uh, there. We were lucky enough to play with some of uh, Brian's pre-generated characters, and since we're new to the system, we're going to kind of talk about, or he's going to kind of tell us how to actually, you know, use the characters that he's got here. The high-level uh, overview, as it were. Of the if, if, like, okay, my character's a monk, so if I didn't put any points in creation to kind of do like a meditative healing yeah i could focus those points elsewhere and i could just be like a street brawler yeah you could be straight up street brawler you could be the the sort of like monk that transcends like we you and i talked about where you could have the movement attribute so you can teleport mm. and stuff like that you know so i mean it, it really is just how how you want to interpret how yeah. you're spending your points, that's what you are. Exactly. I think that's kind of cool. Okay, so it's total point by, uh, you know, uh, yep. archetype system, so it's classless. Um, there is levels. We have uh, attributes, which are physical, uh, social, and supernatural. Uh, and mental. And mental. Yep. Oh, mental. I missed the mental. All right. Um, no worries. 
Yeah, I see right there. So 